to the show now i've got some housekeeping to do now how do i should have some people here waiting to enter the room i see someone there howdy how are you and welcome to the oh i want to record actually from this as well And I'm going to actually turn that heater off. Yep. That way we won't be disturbed by that. Now, let me see. How are you? If you can hear me, please uh, type in something in the comments. Uh, you're listening to the Ample Amputee. And looking at the Ample Amputee podcast, I'm going to try to bring in my co-host, Chef T. So let me understand what, if I can do that right now. Invite a guest to see how this layout is unique. So let me send another invitation. Copy. to you, Chef. Jeffrey, you're here. Okay, Jeffrey, are you here? I'm gonna send that off to Jeffrey. Who's our guest? And we should be going live. We are definitely going live. Okay, so now I actually sent off that invitation. So now I'm gonna send off another invitation. Understood. But now I want to send an invitation. Okay, so I'm trying to find out. Hello, I'm in the room. I don't see you. Okay. All right, Jeffrey, I am looking. I do not see you. I'd like to bring you on camera. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that. And I'm going to put in... 
my phone number here that you can call in certainly into the show. Let me add Anaya. Hello, Anaya. How are you today? Hi, good evening. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm blessed. Good evening and welcome to the Ample Amputee podcast. Uh, where are you calling from today? I'm calling from Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, how are you holding up in that horrible snowstorm you got over there? Um, we don't have any snow. Oh, no. Oh, my um, mother is in uh, Washington, D.C. Oh, wait, I see some people. One moment. Uh, okay. In Washington, D.C. Okay, Jeff, there you are. Add to stream, Jeff. Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful, Jeff. Great. I'm glad that this worked out. Jeff, hold on. I'm in the middle of a conversation here with Anaya. Uh, and uh, well, my, Anaya, as I was saying, my mother is in Washington, D.C., and she was telling me how horrendous it was uh, mm -hmm. there in that part of the East Coast and how people were even stuck on the highway for a couple of days. Yeah, I heard stories about, like, vaguely, um, I've heard stories about everything going on, but um, there has not been anything here, no precipitation, no nothing. So, oh my. Uh, knock on wood, okay. it stays that way. Oh, I understand that. That is true. And now, are you an amputee? I am. Um, it's been, you are uh, an amputee. And what type of amputee are you? I am a right below knee amputee. Okay, right below the knee. And uh, how long has that been for you? Um, it's been over a little bit of or a little bit over a year. Um, it my amputation was October of 2020. October of 2020, or yes. a little bit over a year. And yes. uh, how are you? How are you adapting? Um, it 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 gets better over time. Um, I think. Are you right using now, a prosthetic yet? Yes, I am. I'm walking yep. with no assistance, like just you know walking. Um, when I'm outside, I do bring crutches because I get, like, nervous. Um, you know, I just get, like, you know, like, overwhelmed and you might get a little dizzy. So I just bring crutches. Um, yeah. But when I'm yeah. indoors, I don't use any any more aids, which I'm very happy about. Um, so, yeah. And and do you, uh, are, do you live alone? Are you a married woman or... No, I am. Um, I'm single. I, I live with my mother. Like um, my living arrangement is like uh, it's my mother and I. And um, you know, it's like she's a senior, so she can't really help much. So I'm yeah. more more so helping her in a sense. Um, <laughs> and so it's even like, through your rehabilitation, was it that way? Yeah, like not not as much. Um, that's what I think pushed me to become more independent and like get it together because, um, you know, like I know like she needed my help with certain things as well. So, yeah. 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 Um, okay. Before we go on, I, I want to do two things. I first want to welcome you, Omar. Welcome brother Omar. How are you, sir? Wonderful. How are you doing today? All right. I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Welcome for tuning in. I wasn't sure if you wanted to be on camera or not. Uh, right. And you, okay, you let me know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, everyone except for our guest, Mr. Jeffrey, on mute. And I'm getting used to this uh, technology, so we're going to work it out. And so now I have. Oh wait, oh, I want to put him on mute. There we are. Now, Jeffrey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I can. And I can hear you fine. And can uh, Omar, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear Jeffrey okay? Excellent, excellent. Um, I think I got a little bit too much reverb on my mic. Here we go. That's better, better. Yeah, that's better. Jeffrey, uh, everyone, I would like to welcome Mr. Jeffrey. I have a little intro here I'm going to read uh, for everyone here. One moment. We have with joining us tonight five-time best-selling author and ghostwriter, of 17 award-winning, best-selling memoirs and nonfiction books, including his latest uh, manuscript, Amped Possible. We have with us tonight, Mr. Jeffrey A. Magnus. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. I really, I really appreciate you having us on. 
There you go. Hey, I'm trying out some some new stuff here. Uh, okay, Jeffrey, I, lost thank you. I lost your. I can't see your face. I can't see you. But uh, okay. Oh, hold on. Let me see what's going on. I think I understand. Oh, I know why. Because I this Anaya on the top, but now I want to put you on double. Okay. So there we got that. And now soon, shortly, uh, my co-host Chef T will be joining us. And uh, so we'll add her in once I see that she is in the room. She'll probably give me a little message. I'm looking at two things at once. I'm looking at our live feed on Facebook and I am looking at our stream yard stream. Well, now I'm getting to more of the subject at hand. Happy uh, New Year to everyone who's joining us tonight. Jeffrey, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your book, Impossible. Well, thank you. Um, I am a, uh, a left leg below the knee. Uh, I lost my left leg in 2017. Um, that's what started the, the whole process of, of writing the book and uh in my journey um of losing my left leg but you know, i mean we're all amputees but i you know i end up enduring i was septic and i literally my kidneys were failing my heart um i was in the hospital for a month with with the sepsis um close close to death and i end up having five uh amputations to lo finally lose the left leg below the knee because of an infection mm. but the the story of the book really came from my treatment, from how I was treated in the hospital and really the complacency of, I mean, not everyone experiences this. And I think that's what was the seed because I, what my wife and I experienced was something of uh, was very bizarre. Uh, I didn't have any physical therapy. I didn't have, I, no one got me out of the bed uh, to work with, you know, anything, walkers or crutches. Um, I was in the bed for, a, you know, over a month and then was literally on New Year's Eve. Just I just had the anniversary. Uh, New Year's Eve, they just sent me out with a pair of crutches and said, you know, good luck and see you later. And that's, that's <laughs> the story. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when I was, as I'm, as I was recuperating, I was like, I was like, there has to be something that, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of information out there with amputees, which I love. Um, but I felt there needed to be a book that's going to help not only amputees, but their spouses, their partners. Mm. Their mm -hmm. So this is what my book is all about and possible. It's written for amputees, both upper and lower extremity, and also for their families and their partners and their, and their, uh, to, to understand what they're going through as well. Um, it's on Amazon. It is uh, on Books and Books and Million, Barnes and Noble. It's all around the world. This is with Roman and Littlefield out of New York and London. So, really excited about the book. Uh, it launched in September okay. and went around the world. And the whole goal of the book, you know, really, it's really not uh, to make money. It never was. Uh, money's that's that's one thing, but uh, helping and fellow amputees understand what they're going through from the very first day to the time to get their life back. That's what this book's about. And I spent two years of my life going back through those, those moments and to, to try to capture uh, the true and honest essence of what I was going through in the book. And but the book isn't all my story. The book is, um, I am a certified peer visitor to the amputee coalition. I speak to amputees around the world. Um, I, I volunteer my time and do that. I, I visit them in the local hospitals, whatever's needed. That's what I do. So I, I took my experience and, and research from them and their, their experience and put it in the book to help others, not just my story. I, I told my story, but I, I left it at that. I kind of, I wanted, I wanted others to shine. I wanted others to show how, how it can be done and how you can get your life back by, you know, uh, really believing in yourself and, and following the right path with the right answers, with the right questions. Well, uh, I tell you, there are a few fascinating points about that that I, I want us to think about. Uh, first of all, so when you went into the hospital, mm -hmm. did you know you were going to leave there without a leg? I did not. That's right. Not, okay. As a matter of fact, I when I, I walked into the hospital. And right. You walked into the hospital. 
Yeah. I walked in and I, I knew I knew something was going on for sure. My foot was being engorged. I, I talked to write about that in the book. You know, very. Uh, that was a hard one to write actually because I went. I took. I drove myself to the hospital, like thinking, "Oh, this is going to be the same thing. They're giving me some antibiotics in my excuse my language in my ass. They're going to hit me hard with it, and I'm going to go home and live another day." But right. that wasn't the case that night. And the doctor right. told me, "You need to go to surgery now, or you're going to die." And that was his words. And that I, I never walking in the hospital was the last steps I ever took with my own two legs. That was it. I didn't have any clue. Yeah. And now, did you have children? I have five children. My wife and I have five children um, and grown children, and uh, we're very you know happy with our family. But uh, it was a shock to everyone, you know. A shock um, to everyone. Yeah. And what were and, you doing for work? You were writing at that time when you lost your leg? I, was not, I, I actually uh, was a real estate broker. I owned two real estate companies. Um, so when all that happened, it kind of put me pretty much out of commission um, with everything in my life. I mean, I was on my back and took, you know, there was, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I've always been a writer. You know, I've always been a writer. Uh, sure. I've never did it professionally. Um, but when this this seed was planted, I, I, I really went after it. And once I started writing the book, um, some friends approached me and said, hey, I, you know, I'd like for you to write a book for me. And that's kind of how the, the there whole you thing go. Started. There you go. Written for seven major publishers, including HarperCollins. And this was the first book that I did. After I got after I lost my leg and, and started my book, this is a book called Inventor Confidential with Harper Collins. So really exciting um, you know, to, to be in a career now that I never saw coming. Never um, saw it coming. Never saw it coming. Ever. Right. Never even. Continued. Well, you know, you know, that part of your story is, I think, a situation that many of us find ourselves in when we lost our leg. We didn't see it coming, man. But, That's right. but what also your story. Oh, wait, I want to introduce everyone. Uh, Chef T is joining us. Howdy, Chef T. You hear me? I can hear you. Can you guys see me and hear me? Well, we can, can hear, hear you, but we can't see you. You don't have an image on the screen. Okay, um, let me work on that. But nice okay. to see you. meet you all. Okay. You too. Yes, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say was, okay, you were in real estate before. You're going around, you kill people, houses all day. You know, you, you get out of work, you go home. Oh, well, let me go into the hospital, get this thing. Okay, I ain't gonna have my leg now. And you're lying there in the bed. <laughs> How is your wife responding to this situation? Well, you know, she's been wonderful. And um, I think And at this point, how long have you been married as well? We've been married 10 years, 10 years. And uh, honestly, my wife was really the, the engine for writing the book because it was heartbreaking to watch her be cast and thrown into this new world mm -hmm. like, with an amputee, right. trying to help him, trying to help me get bathed and try to help me get to the bathroom and try to help me, you know, in the kitchen. And she didn't know how to take care of me. You know, and I didn't know how to help her take care of me. Right. I, mean, how, I didn't have any. I didn't have any answers. No one was giving me any answers. And well, that's no the one, crazy thing about your story, man. It really, it really did happen. And I'm not knocking on anyone. I won't ever name names, but it was just really bizarre. And, um, but you know, again, it was a it was because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have the book. Right. Yeah. It, it kind of like uh, where are you from, there, Jeffrey? I am. I'm from West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, I saw that on your site there. I'm from Virginia because I could hear the drawl. Uh, and yeah. it, it, you know, like uh, they say back home, it's kind of like they just, you know, you're like a, a, a fledging thrown out the nest. That's exactly right. And I mean, when you get out that nest, you know, man, you, your leg, you're going to probably hit the ground too a couple times. Well, and uh, I even in the hospital, I, I hit the ground. I got out and it didn't. I was trying to manipulate my weight, and I didn't even my brain hadn't registered that my leg was missing yet. Right, and I still went out of bed and right on the stump. And you know, I did that too. Yes, sir, I did that too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, now, see, but now I tell you what, uh, 
in my rehabilitation process, they did a lot of therapy or something. Now I did go through that process very quickly because I didn't want to be lame. And I had a young child at the time and my wife, and we were in a big transition, which I'll go into at another time. And I just did not feel like I had the time to really like uh, lament and pity myself because I say, well, they're watching me. That's i am be honest with you. That was the first thing I'm thinking. Hey, man, I can't let my boy see me. OK, already he don't have a one legged daddy. All right. Yeah. Right. So now already I got to deal with that shit. OK, so now I'd be damned if I'm on to start and be the seed of any type of doubt in him. Oh, that's great. Around me. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. you know, the point of this podcast is about encouraging our brothers and sisters to come out of their shells. And now this is a time, especially, and this is why I know that the Lord works in mysterious ways, that you're the first guest on the show for this new year, because your book is about chances. It's about taking a step into the unknown. You said you weren't prepared to write this book, but you followed your heart and you had support. That's a big deal. The That's support. And, uh, Tell and, us about uh, how you say your wife encouraged you and was the fuel for well, that. She, it was watching her struggle, you know, try to, you know, not only get every, every little thing from, you know, getting me in and out of a wheelchair at first, right. uh, to getting me in and out of the vehicle to go to doctor's appointments. Um, you know, the first, the first, the second day I was home, this is a true story and I'm not exaggerating, but the second day I was home, it was about five degrees here. And I literally fell in the ice and snow on one leg, and and, could, and I fell fell on my pelvic bone, and I Ugh. couldn't couldn't hardly move. So I crawled through the mm. ice and snow, and she couldn't help me. And I was I like, this is, "This is horrible." So there has to be others that are probably experiencing these type of things around the world, right. you know. And that was really the catalyst for the book, you know, to to help not only the amputees, which I truly want to do but it's to help their families and their partners understand what they're going through as well. And, you know, I think, uh, tell us, uh, for about, because, uh, one thing that we share similarly is this writing also too, was a vehicle of therapy for me immediately after my amputation, I had done some writing previously, mm -hmm. but when I became an amputee, I was in a totally different, uh, genre of work. Right. But I had right. to I made a radical change in my life as soon as that leg came off. And so I immediately delved into writing, getting my thoughts and communicating my ideas and learning how to express myself in this new body that I was going to experience the rest of my life in. And so I got some articles published in uh, In Motion magazine and all the major Limb Loss uh, magazines and became co-editor on one of them. Yes, sir. So I'm very familiar with the Amputee Coalition and all. And that writing, that writing brought the attention of other things and other opportunities have now presented themselves simply because we took the chance of writing. So your writing led to you now writing, being a ghostwriter. And now I want to talk about that. Tell us about your ghostwriting. Well, great. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I've, I've written for authors all around the world. I've written for authors in Holland, Indonesia, um, uh, England. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's really how, cool. how do you. OK, so I'm here. I'm sitting at home. Man, I, I think I want to tell my story. Let me give Jeffrey a call. How do you start? Well, how I start let me just without giving away too many trade secrets, because oh, this is a valuable talent. It's all talent. good. Um, people contact me uh and uh, there's so many people that want to write books and you know i've written for celebrities and and the like um of course confidentiality is at the utmost but people contact me and they say hey i have a book idea i don't know where to begin um uh, you know some people come to me and they say well i've got a whole manuscript but i can't i need help fixing it you know it's all it all about it's all about you know this the where the person is and what they want to do but if someone contacts me about writing a book uh we discuss it we meet um i learn about them because working with a ghostwriter is um 
it, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, there's, there, it's a very uh, personal thing because, you know, when you're writing a book um, with others, then um, they're telling you their personal information and, and there's a, there's a collaboration, there's a friendship involved. And it, and it oh, yeah. develops every author I've ever worked with. We end up being best friends, you know, really close friends and some even best friends. And, um, but, uh, it's, it's a really easy process, but, you know, for me, I think, um, my, my ability to capture someone's voice is, is the, the true skill being able to write someone's words and their ideas and their thoughts and be able to make that page sound just like them and not me. Um, that's, yeah, that's the, yeah. As, it's, as an it's, artist, it is, I can, uh, recognize and identify with the difficulty of trying to make sure that that artist's or that person's authentic voice rings true throughout the manuscript and throughout the book. What what type of process do you engage in to make sure that that happens? It's, it's so great you asked me that. Um, the, uh, you know, a lot of people, well, since we, it was in my bio, I used to be a professional musician. I toured the country for oh. many, many years. I was in Los Angeles. What did you Hollywood. play? What, what tell us, Matt? What did you do? I play guitar. I still do. I still play guitar every single day. Every single day. I love yeah. It. What kind of music you do? It was, it was rock, hard rock at the time. I was anything I was doing, we know or what? Don't run away from it now. Probably don't. Probably don't. <laughs> probably not. I was in a rock band in the uh, '90s in Los Angeles. That's where I was. I was in Hollywood in between 1986 yeah. to '92. I was in Hollywood. Okay, I was there 95 until I think the band maybe broke up in 2009 or something. I don't know. Something like that. But we did, you know, an album or whatever. Yeah, I, I've, I've recorded, five, you know, like four or five albums over my years and everything. And uh, But the reason I said that is um, the creativity that I've always had. In yeah, right. Is, how I'm able to, you know, when I'm when I'm working with an author, <clears throat> I'm able to visualize their their face and their and their words. I study their words and their diction, right. and I'm able to use that creativity to capture a voice, you know, and get like, that tone. See, it's about tone. Tone. It's about tone. Yeah, yeah that's important. About, words are words, but it's about tone and how because everybody speaks differently. I mean, that's right. So it's a it's a skill that I've, you know, it. it it's taken many years to develop. I mean, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of, you know, but it's worth it. A lot, a lot of misses. Yeah. Any formal training as far as the writing? And then I'm yeah. going to bring in Mr. Omar. Yeah, I've taken uh, courses, ghostwriting courses. Uh, I've been yeah. Ghost writer school. But I'll be honest with you, I wrote my first book without any training. So Without any uh, training. Not any You'd training. read some books and say, well, see, now I'm engaged in the writing process right now, man. Ooh, we. I'm not spending enough time on it, first of all, because I know the amount of time that it takes to get done what I want to get done. And so I don't, you know, blame anybody. I just know I sit here at my desk and I'm working on a hundred different other things, including a commercial that we're going to run today. Uh, if, yeah, I think I got it in my stream here. Oh, you know what I'm going to do, buddies? Hold on. Let me run you a stick on it so y'all know how to get in touch here with Mr. Jeffrey. Magnus, in case you would like to utilize some of his skills. So now down there running at the bottom, you got all the information. Yeah. What do you say there, Jeffrey? I was going to say, I appreciate you doing that because, um, you know, it would be a real thrill to, to write for other amputees. Um, I have been approached. Have you done that before? Or? Well, I've been approached here just like in the past, the past week we with two amputees that want to write. Amen. That's so, all right. Yeah, that'd be great. And I, that's what I love to do uh, because of, you know, being, of course, being an amputee, you know, it's, it's easier to understand someone's story. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what this platform's about, too. That's why now, of course, everyone is welcome to be on this platform. Amputee, I don't care if you got two legs, four legs, five, I don't care. But it's primarily, I want to make sure amputees had a place to gather. Yeah, yeah. And, that's Pri and primarily, I said I wanted black amputees to get together because there's not a platform 
for black amputees. So we're going to create some. Yeah, I never even realized. Yeah, that. yeah. A, yeah. And, and that's cool, you know. But like yeah. I said, everyone is welcome. And knowledge is power. So I want to yeah. always provide knowledge to power to, to yeah. my people and to my about, community. You know, my book, you know, I, like I say, this is, I didn't sugarcoat this book at all. I mean, it's not filled with a bunch of, you know, glamorous stories. This is real world stuff from real world amputees who are, you know, told their stories from everything from managing how people look at you to sexuality. Mm. To yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, it all, you know, these are topics that are not talked about. Matter of fact, sexuality you hardly ever talk about is ever. Hardly ever. ever. Hardly right. ever about with amputees because people's lives change when their when their spouses are, you know, I mean, yeah. the fear of rejection, the fear of not being able to perform, um, everything from. But I definitely dive deep into the breast depression and anxiety, yes. and grief, and those two years I spent writing the book, I had to undergo those feelings again, and it was. I'm not going to kid you. I mean, it was there was some tough days, really tough. Because yeah. I had to relive those those moments and those seconds, you know, and, and tears. And here I am by myself and I'm like, you know, crying, you know, but it was the, the, the heart was in it to get it out, you know, to get that book done and, and knowing where it's going to go and hopefully help someone out there. And right after the book launch, you know, I got a message from this this woman who her little grandson was seven years old, was in an accident, had lost his left leg. And she had bought the book and just thanked that she thanked me mm -hmm. to help her little grandson. That's right. what it's all about. And right. I, I shared that post like this is what it's all about. It's not about me. It's about the book and how it's, it can help you. That's the deal. It's, That's it's, right. You know, yeah. Well, you know, resource, you know? So. That, that brings us to Brother Omar. Oh, wait, I see Chef here now. Hold on, Chef. Let me bring you in the room. Hold on. I see you down there now. There you go. <laughs> Hey, Chef. Hey, everybody. Well done. All right. Chef has been listening. I noticed some of it at least. Uh, yeah. Chef, how are you doing this week, sister? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Good. I'm doing well. Great. Brother Omar, I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us where about yourself, where you're from, and tell uh, us about I'm your invitation. I lost my leg in a motorcycle accident. Um, let me go back. My name is Omar. I'm 46 years old. I live in a small town outside of Philadelphia called Coatesville, Pennsylvania. I was merging on the highway in 95. A lady was on the right side of me. She pinned me onto the guardrail. The poster hard the mm. guardrail up, ripped my left ankle off. Mm. But I'm blessed to be alive. But I'm a double Amen. amputee. I did you say what? I'm a double amputee. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I have my own flooring business. And one of my workers didn't show up for work. So I was shaving off the edge of a door feeding it through the table saw. Right. My prosthetic leg slipped on the brand new hardwood floor, slipped on the hardwood flooring. My face went for the blade, so I had to throw my hand down so it wouldn't cut my face in there. So I lost a <sighs> finger and it sliced my hand off, but I'm glad to be alive. Bless you, bless you, Omar, man. Yeah. And it's how, how far between those incidents was the time? Of 12 years. 12 years. Um, yes. Mm. Lord won't through with you yet. And also, I'm also working on a book right now called A Day in My Life because people don't understand what we go through on a day as an amputee with phantom pain, getting comfortable, losing sleep. You know, from mm. the time you get up to put your liner on, you got to hop to the bathroom. You hey, put your leg yeah. on and you got to take your leg off. You got to put a, 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 a shrinker on. You know, it's, it's a lot we go through and people don't understand. Absolutely. Good for you, man. Good for you, yeah. Omar. So I mean, it's, it's like I said, like he said, it's not about it's not about me no more. It's, it's helping others because there's more amputees out here now. A lot of people don't accept it. They think it's the end of their life. But right. Like right. right. What yeah. encourages you to go on, Omar? I had a three year old son, and Amen. I let him see me fail. There you go. I would like I tell people, I'm only one step behind you. Hey. I run up and down ladders every day. I take my leg off them in crawl spaces. I actually have a flooring and painting company. So oh, okay. every day. So you can follow me on my Facebook and see what I do every day. Brother, I mean, type it into the room. Type it into the room so we can uh, keep it in the room there and let it, you know, okay. go on and I'll put it in the feed. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll figure it out in a minute. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. You take your time. To the show. I don't know how you felt me, but thank you for inviting me. Yeah, brother. Well, you know, I'm trying to get the word out, and uh, I'm an aggressive marketer. Okay, <laughs> I like okay. I put the word out once I get it started now. But you uh, know, I put it out there if I believe in it. Huh? I know what else I was wondering. Like, we all sitting here now. You know what I would love to do? We could do it for a week. Just have a, like a little reality show of four or five amputees from different areas. Just spend the week together and see how everybody yeah. just get along and intermingle. That's yeah, a good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's I don't think I've never shows. seen anything like it on there, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody's from all walks of lives. And we could really mm -hmm. make something out of this to show people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Chef was a huge inspiration in getting this sh uh, this show started. And you just pointed out to one of the things that is a part of the core of our message is about living life. Yes. It's about life don't stop, man. We got to work. We got bills to pay. We got children that we got to raise. And yeah. we got legacies that we're trying to build. So That's we ain't going to help us people. And, and you're exactly right. And now what we are trying to also do is encourage our amputee brothers and sisters that feel ashamed and uh, are closed in and shut in. And I'm telling you what, that is such a foreign concept to me that I really can't get it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I go, I go deep in the book about everything you just said. Because at the end of the day, this book is a is a is a guide, but at the it's just what the title is, Am Possible. It it's encourage it it's an encouraging book. It, it, uh, at the end of the day, it leaves the amputee with answers and gives them my hope is to give them hope. That is absolutely the yes. end of it all. Yeah. And I love to hear your story, Omar. I think I mean you're you're just you're one of so many that uh, show that you can do this. You can do this every day, man. And and uh, warms my heart, man. I'm glad to see yeah. you doing well. Really, yeah. Omar, do you still ride? Yes, I do. And yes, you I still do. ride? Right on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I do a lot That's of right. events, but my my next goal, my biggest goal and challenge in life, I want to do the Four Corners of the United States. All right. Okay, you want to ride your bike there? Yeah, all four corners across the United right. States. That's all right. So you know, I said, let's do it, man. I want to see you do it. I, I want to see you do it. Myself, and I make them happen. Yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, and tell me a little bit more about your flooring business. Where you at? You say outside of Pennsylvania. Uh, outside what type of, of services do you offer? I offer flooring and painting, and then I do a little bit of lighting. But I just try to. Uh, well, actually, what happened when I lost my leg? I was, I was working in uh, clinical engineering, fixing infusion pumps. So I got bored of that, walking along all through the hospitals. So I had to fall back on what I went to school for, was carpentry and cabinet making. So I could take my leg off and actually lay flooring. So I yeah, had absolutely. to use what I had to do and do what I love to do. Because other than that, I mean, I, I can walk long, but I get tired. Yeah, but right. I had to learn to do something that my life could adapt to. And that's, that's the hardest go. part is people don't like change. Like we all were born with one blessing to do something, but sometimes you got to learn how to do something else. Right. You know, and they teach you in the Marine Corps to adapt. You got to adapt yeah, your skills people, yeah, to the situation. And that's what a lot of people don't understand when they lose a leg or a limb to how to adapt. This is your life. Mm -hmm. now. If you don't accept it, that this is your life. You're not going to go on. That's yeah. the hard part. That's the hardest part is accepting it. Absolutely. You know, I got an email, not an email, a Facebook message today. And I mean, it damn break my heart, man. I've been talking to this guy in one of the Facebook rooms about he was depressed, very depressed, one in his life. And I said, well, brother, you know, you got to count your blessings. And he went down. This is what I hate about being an amputee. Okay. Mm. Every single one of those points, I agreed with him. I said, oh, yep, I deal with that. And I made sure that I gave him a living example of how I understand that exact thing that you wrote, brother. I understand that that shit piss you off, man. It makes you real sad. I understand that. And I said to him, but what about the blessing? What blessings are you experiencing? Man, this broke my heart. This is what that man wrote back to me. What blessings? No blessings. 
And now how do I get through to a person? See, that has something to do with, like Chef T has said before, your life before being an amputee. Chef, that commercial that we've been running of that clip from you <laughs> has been getting a lot of footage. Yeah, it's been getting, he, that's what brought him into writing us, okay? Okay, okay. He don't see no blessing at all. Not blessing. even the breath that he gets to breathe every day. What do you do about that? Well, my blessing is I get to go and, 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 and tell people my experience, especially young people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I get the blessing of passing the message. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that. Like, I, I've been where you've been. I, I had to go through the process of, of going to therapy when you didn't want to get up. You're walking between the parallel bars, putting your leg on and it hurts your stump. I mean, I've, I've been through that all. When it rains, yeah. your body aches. You know, I've been through the chronic yeah. pain. I've been, I, I've been on track. Like I tell people, it's, it's, every day is a challenge. I, get, I, I used to catch Amtrak a lot. Amtrak has not a lot of handicap accessible train stations in these old towns. Mm -hmm. Some I didn't even think about before. Yeah. You know how many things you think about now that I really didn't think about before I was an amputee? Right. Exactly. But I tell you what, it got my attention now. Oh, yeah. What yeah. services are available, where I can go, what rides at the carnival I can ride. And don't let them know that you're an amputee you're because amputee. then they want to stop you. They, they do. Stop you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's they, put they put boundaries on you before I you even let them know what you can do. It's called managing the stairs. It's called managing the stairs. And this talks about that very topic about how public is very difficult on an amputee, especially lower limb. You know, getting getting into buildings, getting up, going to a mall even. It's difficult. Let's face it, it is. And like Omar said, you get tired. You get tired of trying, and then I get know, fussed up. Five walks are not level. Nothing. It's you can trip and fall. It's dangerous out there, you know. So I wrote about that, you know. What you're got, saying there, Omar? I got fussed up plenty of times when people think they see your upper. <laughs> upper <laughs> I parked the handicap zone and had people cuss me out, get out, and pull out my pant leg, and they see my prostate. <laughs> <laughs> I experienced that too. We're yeah. living in a crazy world, and it's just, crazy. It's just sad. It's just yeah, sad. You hold down the fort here, real quick. Let me go let my dog in. You hold down the fort, Chef. Okay. For the only sure. thing I either too is, you know, when you're an amputee, uh, they got an application. Uh, if you're handicapped, if I put yes, you won't hire me. You but won't hire me. You find out you, I got a prosthetic leg, you fire me for lying. Exactly. That's right. So it's a lose lose situation. So you you yeah. automatically have to lie about who you are, but then when something happens to you, you have to tell the truth. So it's you're in a difficult situation all the time. Well, I just think when people problem. hear that you're disabled, they look at you like, oh, something, oh, you sick. Right. Like, already they automatically you. look at you, oh, man, like oh, like a negative vibe when you say you're disabled. I don't consider myself disabled because I get up with work every day. I That's do right. more work than the average person. They got all their limbs that don't want to work. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah, I, I got out of the car one evening, one day, and some guy said, Who you? I, I pulled in a handicap spot. And he's like, You sure don't look handicapped. And I right. did exactly what Omar did. I pulled my pants like up. I said, Does this look handicapped to you? You know? Right. You know? uh, and and, and what about this? Then, huh? What about sharing the story or like the looks from the children? I think, I hope that's a chapter in your book. I haven't read the book, but I will be reading it. It is. The looks from the next yeah. story you have to tell children. Yeah. The, you know, I was standing in line and these, these kids, uh, these were just not little kids. You know, most little kids are just curious. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the older kids, you know, some of them are not, they don't have it up here yet. And, you know, get the little snickers and the little laughing and all that stuff. And, and this one day I, I was, I kind of let them know, <laughs> I let them know real, real quick. Like you, you guys need to back off. You need to go somewhere, you know, cause it's, you know, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, before, when I got my leg off, I was working here in the school district and <clears throat> lying in that hospital bed, didn't really know what I was going to do, but I knew that business wise, the most sensical thing to do is for me to try to get my butt back to work, stay on the payroll of the school board until mm -hmm. I figured out what I was. So 
I decided to uh, go back to school and that I was going to go back into that classroom and be in front of them kids again. And they were going to know that Mr. Q lost his leg because all the time I'd been at that school, those years, I told those kids, you can do it. Our kids, we're in a rural community. Mm-hmm. And so our kids are somewhat disenfranchised as they're categorized by the system. I don't believe in that. We hit right. their adversities, but these are some brilliant, brilliant children out here in the high desert. Brilliant yeah. kids. I'm talking about uh, they know how to survive. Okay. When this world goes, these kids still don't know how to survive. All right. Yes. But darn that. Uh, tell them you gotta, you know, you gotta fight. You gotta, I don't care what your circumstances, life gonna throw you obstacles and blah 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 boom. Talking all that stuff. But see, the time came when I had to show and prove that I meant what I said. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. so when I walked back on that campus after getting my prosthetic, had been away for several you know, months or whatever. I don't even remember how long it had been. It wasn't too, too long, but it was long enough. But I walked back on that campus and I was at that school again for another year and a half before I understood that I was experiencing a major shift and that the classroom was not where I needed to be anymore, that I had to go out into the world and yeah. do some, some different stuff. And yeah. making that decision took courage and some belief and a certain amount of balls, man, you just got to go for it. Absolutely. You just yeah. got to do it. Gotta do just got to do it. You ain't going to you know. starve. <laughs> so you don't want to see yourself starve, so you better work. Hold on, That's I got true. a comment in here. Let me see what's going on. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Ayana. Oh, Anaya is still there. Oh, she just was saying hi. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, guys, let's take a break for a second. Stay here, and I'm going to take y'all out the stream, and I want to run a test on a commercial, so stand by. Revive your essence. Release the shine of rejuvenated hair and skin. Available in three scents. Black Lotus Ahoba Oil. Release your shine. We have lived from a place down deep. Pain, love, and time. Real men climb. Real men smell real good. Wandering sun, lather up. And there you go. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Here we go. Chef, I was running a commercial there. What you think? <laughs> I'm going to get it together. We're going to get it going. <laughs> so welcome back, everybody. We got a few moments left. I want to thank, uh, before we get going, I want to thank our guests. And what I'm going to do is run his uh, banner once more. One moment. I tell you, the show is coming along very, very well, people. And I really appreciate you guys being here. We're going to keep on pushing. And uh, I'm very happy with our turnout tonight and the information and communion that was happening. I encourage you guys to like and share. Uh, Chef and Omar, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And uh, have folks uh, join us next Wednesday. Uh, let me bring back Jeff. Uh, you know, Chef, can I ask a question real quick? Of course. What's Chef's real name on Facebook? Are you not on his Facebook? I am. It is under Janae Edwards. J A N A Y, yes, Edwards. Okay. And uh, Jeff, you know, I'm excited about your being here because from what I've gathered from your book online and I went through the reviews and I just kind of did my research on the piece, mm-hmm. a part of the essence of that book is really about relationship and it gets down to one's relationship to with themselves and a lot of your book is about relationship to others around you and how 
you know, we navigate and how they navigate around us in relationship. Yes, that right? correct. That and, and, and I think that that subject, let me uh, turn this down, deserves, oh, I know. Deserves a fair amount of attention. And when we're talking about relating to others, and relating to those around us, there are different vehicles that we can do it. Omar does it through his business of flooring. He does it in the, uh, he said he had children. Jeff has a very uh, social life there and is navigating and interacting and relating to others. Tell us about what you gather from the stories of others and what you observe in regards to relating to others post amputation and the, and the importance of it. Well, the stories from my book, you know, definitely, uh, these are all people that uh, uh, have, you know, not only the first didn't, they, they doubt it themselves, they had serious uh, anxiety about coming back into the world doing their thing, but they also um, realize that they have family. I talk to this book, there's a stories in my book about a young gentleman who had a family who had lost his life. He was in a park and lost his, his left leg. I think it was his right leg. But he was in a in construction accident. He couldn't work until he was back on his feet. He took care of his family, but he did. He got himself together. He, you know, he really worked hard and got it because he, he he loved for his children. I mean, he's like, I got to do something. So, and that was again, that's just the, that's just the hardest part of the is relationships with others, people around you. How are they? How are they adapting to their to your limb loss? You know, most a lot of amputees. I mean, there's some amputees that are, that are not uh, with anyone, and that's a hard place to be. I get that, um, but. Ultimately, if you are by yourself, there is people to reach out to. Um, you can, but you, you just got to do it. But you know, throughout your journey, and I'm sure everyone here can agree that we have all of us have people around us, and from children, spouses, to partners, to you name it. But those people are going through their your friends, even just friends, colleagues, coworkers. They're all dealing with your limb loss in, at some point in some way. So that's what the heart and soul of my book is. Is about getting back to that and helping them help you and you help them throughout your journey with your limb loss and at the same time helping yourself believing in yourself to get back to life once had that's what this book is all about excellent you know and everyone has a story and how you choose to communicate your story is one of the vehicles that and opportunities that you offer. Okay, uh, now Omar, you know what, brother? Do you have videos of you doing your work online? I bet that's a hell of a marketing tool because you know I got a little construction company out here. Yes, I just sent all you guys uh, Facebook requests. If you look on my page, you see a lot of work. We will do so. A lot of videos of me, what I do. You know. Oh, uh, excellent. Like everybody, excellent. Me, how come I don't get a lay that look like a lay? Because I accept who I am. This is my life now. Yeah. You know? Like I go to the grocery store, like he was saying, little kids don't see prosthetics. They're happy to see it. But the older kids, they're like, yeah, laughing. But the kids are so like, wow, he's bionic. That's what, yeah, that's what my boys uh, <laughs> kids say. His, they say, he's bionic dad. He got a bionic leg. And as long yeah. as you keep stepping hard and walking tall, like the old movie was, just walk tall, man. Ain't nobody going to mess with y'all. You know, one of the things and one of the subjects I want to talk about, and actually I'm going to talk to you about this off camera, Jeff, I think. Uh, I think there needs to be a book, Amputee Survival. I've been saying this for about two years now, and I'm talking about legitimate survival techniques specifically for amputees in the case uh, shit hits the fan situation breaks off. You got enough water? You got enough of your meds and how to take care of your leg in case something happened? You better have make yeah. sure all that stuff because we got to go that little extra bit in case shit happened. And I want to also, do you know how to fix your prosthetic if it breaks? Oh, yeah. I had do you that. have extra parts for your prosthetic? I talked about that in the book. It happened to me. My yeah, leg, actually, my foot fell off, off. When I first cut my prosthetic, my foot fell off and I was out and about. And I had nowhere to go, but like, like what? So I had a city worker pull up in a truck. I said, "You got any tools?" 
He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got you get that four out. millimeter wrench and you get to work on it. That happened, you know. Amen. But, and but, Chef was just telling us last week how you can be out in public, leg comes off. What you gonna do? Put it oh, on, yeah, yeah, get yeah. back up. Especially, I got a lot. I got a my liner is a liner strap. And you know, yep. when it gets loose and get air in it or get too much sweat in it, and you're in the Florida or Texas, it just slide off. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Oh, wow. you know, I, it's funny you said survival. I, I didn't mean to interrupt anyone. Um, you said survival. I think that's great. I really do because like there was an incident here at my house. I got I heard something and I thought somebody was in my home. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm about to get my leg on and you're trying to you're in panic mode, but you're trying to get your leg on it's, it's second, <laughs> right? right? Right. These are like you what you just said is a great great topic for a book. I mean, it's not, it, is, it really is. It really is. It re so we'll talk about that. And you know what? I want people to kind of book where a lot of different people bring in their thoughts. That's how you get the book done. You see, yeah. a lot of, there's this guy. Uh, he is a MMA, MMA guy. And he is a amputee. Really? Now I've been, yes, I've been chatting with him on the Facebook. But he says, Mr. Q, there's a guy with no legs at MMA. So he's going to put me in contact with the guy who's a double amputee and an MMA fighter. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I'm going to try to see if I can get them on the show. Uh, we're, uh, we're talking about physicality tonight a little bit, but next week we're actually going to have a five-time para-Olympian athlete on the show. Awesome. James, He's your friend, actually, Jeffrey. James... Owen Robert. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, he'll be on the show next week, uh, and uh, he's going to share us a little bit about his story. And he's one hell of an athlete, Omar and uh, Chef. And I'm going to send you, Chef, some links to his works and stuff like that, and all. Okay. okay. Well, guys, we're hitting up on an hour. That's the end of our show. Again, thank you, Jeffrey, for joining us. Omar, thank you, brother, for joining us. We're going to be connecting with you on the YouTube and uh, we'd love to have you come on back and let's do a feature on you and talk about your business and let's see what we can do to promote you and, and get you going. All right. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank Amen. You, brother. Everybody. All right, guys, I'm going to see y'all next week. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you for coming in, sir. Please spread the word. And I'm going to be putting this on all the social media. You got it. I got thank it. You. All right. Okay. Jeff, I'll reach out to you in a little while. All right, then. Good night, everyone. Good night.